Good morning, everyone. I love the bubble of everybody talking and laughing and enjoying each other. Oh, thank you, Lord. Well, good morning. I'm going to read a little scripture to open us up this morning. Um, out of Psalms 112, I'm just going to ask everybody to stand for the reading of the word and open us up. I'm really excited this morning. God has something good for us today. Amen. He does every time we gather. He waits for us every morning to wake up so he can just pour his goodness out over us, right? Amen. So uh, here's our psalm today. It's Psalm 112, and it says, Shout in celebration of praise to the Lord. Yes. Okay. Yes. Everyone who loves the Lord and delights in him will cherish his words and be blessed beyond expectation. Their descendants will, pros will be prosperous and influential. Every generation of his godly lovers will experience his favor. Whew, just receive all that. Great blessing and wealth fills the house of the wise, for their integrity endures forever. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you that we are blessed because of you. You love us. We love you. We are a family together, and we've come to shout our praise and to celebrate and declare your name and the wonder of who you are. God, we're just saying you are our God. We're excited to be here today, and we come with hope and expectation. We come with our hearts fully open to receive what you have planned for us today. So God, you be glorified through our praises, through our testimony, through the word. You be glorified in everything we do because we are exalting your holy name. And we just thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated for a minute. Just a minute. We have an awesome worship set this morning for you. So if you're a dancer, get ready to come up and dance, and uh, you'll, have an, you'll have an awesome time. Awesome time. Uh, we're going to receive an offering in just a few minutes, but before we do that, we're going to uh, hear about some testimonies from some people that God's working in their lives this week. Anybody have a testimony they want to share this morning? Okay, well, we'll go right into worship then. Okay. Okay. All right, are you awake? Here we go. Testimony time. Anybody have a testimony they want to share? I'll start. So uh, I had a testimony. We had our worship practice yesterday, and it was so amazing. You can just see God begin to knit everybody together, the instruments, the singers. The, it was just beautiful. Even the prophetic rose up and was released. And uh, our AV guys did just an amazing guy job and so we appreciate them but it was just really amazing to see the move of the lord through the hearts of the worshipers amen amen, amen, amen. okay did that prime the pump did that prime the pump anybody have another testimony they want to share come on nobody wants to share that. God. well all right marquita's not here yet sorry Praise Jesus. I just want to brag on Jesus. Um, we had an awesome time at the evangelistic, evangelizing training or whatever that we had yesterday. And it just reminded me of something. And so um, I'm just going to be really quick and brag on Jesus because this morning I was just filled with joy and laughter, right? And the Lord was like, remember when? And for me, um, my defining moment with God was I got married at 19 and got into the most abusive, physically abusive, emotionally abusive relationship I'd ever been in and had no idea that this was ever going to come up or happen. Got divorced at 21, got remarried at 23, and got divorced at 29, and both spouses left me. I didn't leave them. <laughs> I didn't even have the courage to leave. But anyway, um, I was very brokenhearted. At age 29, I was on my face, and I was like, Lord, what happened to the joyful girl that from 1 to 18 was filled with life and life is not supposed to be like this. Didn't even know Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. And I just want to speak to you today. If you've ever been brokenhearted, rejected, ostracized, and don't know why, my prayer was, Lord, do something with my life or I'm going to end it. And God just encountered me. I was on the floor, on my face. 
I wasn't even on TBN. I just remember this pastor was preaching in the background, and he said, for the young woman who's praying about her marriage, <laughs> God has not deserted you. And that set a domino effect of God working things out in my life. So when you see this joy and this excitement about Jesus, or when you see us praise, when that song says, I thank God, he picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground because I know where I was, and I thank God for the smile on my face and the joy in my heart. So be encouraged on today. How about that? How about that? Yeah. You have one? All right. Praise God. Wow, that was awesome. Uh, anyway, hello, church. <laughs> um, um, okay, we had a lot of things go wrong in our home and we're still paying stuff off. Um, I wanted to take the uh, preaching class because I feel like God actually told me I'll be traveling with dancers and I'll be teaching some and then the dancers will also minister. So I'm holding tight on that word. Well, yesterday I got a check in the mail. <laughs> Uh, it, you know, some of this is due to my uh, brain cells deteriorating at my age. I overpaid one of my credit cards, $550. <laughs> so praise God. Amen, amen. Anybody else want to share? Oh, all right. Hallelujah. <laughs> my name is Tim Bissa. Shay's wife, yes. I don't know those that know Shay. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I just, as I was coming out of the bathroom, I felt like, oh, you need to give a testimony. I didn't even know you do testimonies. But I knew that I realized, and Gina told me when I got here that it's testimony time. I said, oh, great. Yeah, the Lord, you were already talking to me to give a testimony. And I'm not going to go into details as to exactly what this testimony is about. But the Lord healed me of something major, like major. That does a spiritual attack, witchcraft. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That took place for about, at least that's been going on for about a year and a half. But it broke totally, completely. <laughs> I just, I don't even know how to express myself, you know, to the Lord. But, you know, just in recognition of that, I say, thank you, Lord. Because this is com complete, I'm completely healed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Ms. B? Yes, uh, God is real, and he does things unsuspectedly. You don't understand it. Um, <laughs> uh, just uh, yesterday, they had that little class uh, we had for um, uh, evangelism class. Just a handful of people was there. I was there. And I was just thinking to myself, the guy was going on and on and on about, you know, how to evangelize, to go out, to get people, and how to talk to them and all this other stuff. And then I said, okay, that's great. Then all of a sudden he says, no, we're going over to Walmart right after this whole thing. I said, wait, wait, whoa. This is like throwing it in there really fast. I, was, I had no idea it was going to happen. Like, okay, all right, all right, this is good. And then I said, wait a minute. And it's like the the... the you know, the other part of you, the, the, the evil side, of, you have so much stuff to do. You got your laundry, you got to get that straight, you didn't get your dishes out the sink, blah, 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 blah. you can't go because you got to get this. And the other voice was saying, you know, you got to go. So I went on. And then when we went in the store, yeah, there's so many people standing in the aisles and stuff like this. I didn't know it was going to go in. I thought we was going to stand outside. But we went into the store, and then all, you got all these people up there, and you know what Walmart is. These people are serious. They, they come to get their stuff to get out of there. So here I am, and he says, oh, I'll break the ice first. I'll go first. And then, you know, he's asking people, do you know if you're going to go to heaven and hell or not, and this and that and other things. And I was like, you don't start off just like that, you know. And, then, and he says, okay, how do you do it? I said, well, you got to come into it, like kind of slowly and I met a couple and I did I, I had a chance to, to speak to about two or three different people and they said that they're going to try to get here to the church and so they can have their souls saved and that was just that was just awesome sauce and but, but before I did that uh, just the, uh, the day before on a Saturday I lost my glasses 
Now, these that I have on my face is, is expensive. They're, they're the ones that I have. And I know I put everything in my purse. I left the, the bus barn because that's where I work. And I was driving. I said, that garnet can't find my glasses. I said, that's the expensive ones. And it didn't have to be the old ones. That was all scratched up. It had to be the good ones. So I'm driving down the street. And just because it looks to me that I have gone in there, like, against your will, like, I didn't want to do it. Mm, I don't want to witness to nobody. But I went on and did it anyway. And when I was driving home, coming from, you know, Tarpon Springs, going up to Pasco County, on my windshield, I got a picture of it. This was sticking on my car. I'm going like 50 miles per hour. How come this little lintsy case didn't just blow off and have 16 cars run over it? You understand what I'm saying? It was, I couldn't believe it. I told my daughter, look at that. She goes, Mommy, um, God put it up there so that you can see it. I said to myself, so I pulled over. I said, this has to be wedged in there, right? It has to be wedged in real hard. It was just laying there. It was just on top, just like it's just, just la I'm going 50 miles per hour. This is what I get paid back. So that stuff is real. <laughs> God is real. He can do some, just, you might think it's little, but this is a lot. These Ray-Bans, you know, they just, they're not cheap. So I thank God for that. Amen, amen. Thank you. Anybody else got a share? Oh, Pastor Gene's got a share. I was, uh. First of all, those of you that came out for the evangelism training yesterday, thank you. We had a, 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 a what I thought was a small turnout. Actually, as after after I talked, but there was about ten of us here. I was talking with uh, David Mercer, uh, uh, who was doing the training, and I, and I was apologizing to him. I said, "I'm sorry, we didn't have a better turnout than this." And you know what he told me? He said, "He says you're the third church we've done this we've done this with in this area, and you had the biggest turnout." I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, uh, after the training, we went out to, uh, uh, to Walmart. Dee was there with us. And uh, 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 evangelists are sneaky. I, I, uh, D D D David told me what he did to you. Yeah, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, he, 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 would, uh, he introduced her to uh, some, to some, to some uh, young ladies there and said, Dee's got something she wants to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, evangelists are good are good at that, but uh, uh, he was just just talking, you know, just hearing uh, Michelle's testimony. It reminded me of the the first person that I talked to was uh, when I first got there. Uh, I saw there was a, t a picnic table outside. And there was uh, a, a young lady sitting there. Well, I knew I needed to go meet David, so I went and met him at the at the front door and said, "Hey, uh, you and D go on ahead." I, I said, "There's somebody over here I need to go talk to." So I went back to that little break area, and the girl wasn't there. There was a guy, and I'm like, "Okay, well maybe that's who I'm supposed to talk to." So I uh, sat down and just begin uh, begin to talk with him, and and I said, "Is there anything I can pray for you about?" And he said, sure. He says, I just came off of a three-year abusive relationship. He said, I'm about to be homeless. And, he said, and about three weeks ago, I had, uh, uh, I had a gun to my mouth, ready to end it. I thought, okay, so you do need prayer. <laughs> so <laughs> prayed with prayed with the guy, gave him the, uh, uh, yeah, I got his phone number. I texted him after, gave him information about our church, gave him information about uh, uh, the Shepherd Center, and, and he even told me his work schedule. He works at Walmart. He just started working there. And um, so I'm going to follow up with him again. But the thing that I saw in all that is that people right now are – you, you, you kind of go out there, particularly in these situations, thinking, no, nobody really wants to hear what I have to say. Nobody is going to want to talk to me. I'm telling you, they want to hear, they want somebody to talk to them. Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to bring it up, okay? But they're looking for somebody that will just open the door for them and, and, and bring it up. I mean, you guys saw on Fox News uh, this week, uh, Jenny Weaver, a local evangelist baptized you know over 200 people in the gulf of mexico last week made national news this is what's happening this this is this is what's happening in this area people are hungry uh, almost everyone we talked to yesterday i told pastor i said are, they said they're looking for a church we just handed out business cards you know cause, well here, here we are you know and um uh but at, at any rate uh 
uh, you, you have that prompting just to talk, even if it's, you, you, don't have to hit, you don't have to hit them in the head with a track. Just ask them, hey, is there anything I can pray for you about? And uh, it's very rare you have anybody tell you no. And, uh, and even if they don't know, sometimes they'll tell you, oh, I, I really, I, I, I guess I need prayer. I don't really know what I, what I need prayer for. I mean, you know, I've had people tell me that. And, and then you just kind of have to lean on the prophetic at that point and just, and just, just okay, we'll just go for it and see what God does. It, people are hungry. They're, 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 they're crying out for, uh, and, and desperate. I've been in that desperate situation before, just like, just like Michelle. I, I remember there was an appointment in, uh, uh, when uh, actually not too long before I met my wife, uh, I, I was I was lonely. I was hurting. Uh, I was very discouraged. Nothing was working out for me. Ministry had kind of gone, you know, out the door, and uh, uh, I was just I was just really broken. And I remember just just sitting in my living room, what really seeking the Lord. Actually, I was I was pretty angry with him. You know, I, I didn't really want to talk to him, and I certainly didn't want to hear about him. And I'm sitting in I'm sitting in my living room watching a game show of all things, and the Holy Spirit comes into my living room and starts to talk to me. He says, "I'm going to restore to you the years that the canker worm and the palmer uh, worm has eaten." And, and, and God visited me. I had two visitations. One was an open vision. One was almost nearly an audible voice in my living room, and God completely restored me. And it was because somebody, a, a lady pastor in our area, uh, was had been praying for me and interceding for me, and and God and God saved me. But you could be the difference maker in somebody's life, even if it's just praying for somebody, even if it's just you know just taking the time to listen to somebody. There are desperate people, and I'm telling you, God is on the move. Hearts are open, and they're ready to receive. The harvest is ripe and falling off the trees, folks. But uh, did, uh, I didn't mean to preach. Well, yeah, I really did. But uh, anyway, uh, th thank you. Take some time. Be a difference maker in somebody's life. Amen. Amen. Well, I wasn't going to say anything with these. <laughs> I was here yesterday, too, and went out for the evangelism thingy and you know, for several years now, I keep trying to go do that, and, and I'll go a little bit, and then I'll quit, and then I'll go a little bit, and then I'll quit, and, you know, that didn't work too good. <laughs> the, the Lord's asking us to go, yeah, and actually, we are going. Every step we take, you know, you remember Joe's testimony at the gas pump, and lots of different ones, and every step we take, we're out there, and so... People are there, just like Jean just said. And I like what Dee said, because I like when I start some kind of relationship to start with. Oh, you like that that hang soap? You know, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> I had one of those conversations yesterday. They were Christians, and so I had like three times as they're saved, and yeah, they are, and they got a church. And I'm like, okay, God, you know, praise the Lord. That was a good uh, divine appointment conversation. But the reason I'm here is, you know, and... Um, so I really didn't have that conversation until the very end. I walked down the aisle and D and David are talking to people like, I got time for one more. <laughs> so I got bolder and went down to the produce aisle and asked this lady if she had a minute, you know, yeah. And so I got right into the conversation and she actually just got saved um, Monday, um, the, the eclipse day, you know. And so she she gave us her name and, and number, and I'll follow up with her, and the church will follow up with her. But if you haven't been doing this or you haven't come, it's not too late. You know, it, there's going to be a big meeting coming up in May, and pastors will tell you about it. And what really came to mind was Pastor Cindy, you know, she preached on the fullness of God. And that fullness is that sozo, and that sozo is that salvation, healing, and deliverance, the whole, all of it, the fullness. And that's what really came to mind. And I remember my testimony, like Michelle said, because um, when I was two and a half years old, there's pictures of me with just the light in my eyes. And when I was three years old, and ever since then, there are pictures of me had this deep sadness in my eyes. And I didn't even realize. And... Through the years, my aunt sent me the two pictures, and she saw the difference, and I saw the difference, and I knew, and I gave it to the Lord. And he put that light in my eyes again. And, you know, when the enemy tries to come and put fear in me a couple years ago, this one day, fear, and the Lord's like, go in the mirror <laughs> and look in the mirror and pray.
pray, you know, the love of God over you. God loves us. You know, look in the mirror, clap your hands. God loves you. So I did it. And I saw that sadness trying to come back. And when I did that, that light came back into my eyes again. And the Lord wanted me to see that that morning because that afternoon fear tried to take me out. Had I not seen that and had a direct, you know, witness my own self with my own eyes of what the Lord did, which he's been doing all my life, I don't think I'd, I think I'd, I'd give in. I think I would have given in to that fear that day, and I didn't. So God is here to heal, to save, and deliver in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you. As most of you know, I write the CEPs, uh, the current event prayers, and for the last couple of days, God has had me on a blog on Israel that is their news, but they're going minute by minute as to what's happening. So last night, or yesterday when I did the uh, current events, I just watched it as the day went on, and all the countries all the way around Israel turned against Israel. They shut down their airspace and they said, no, don't fly over. So that left Israel like in a fishbowl with all her enemies all around her, surrounded with no way to really to, uh, to retaliate. And um, I sent out prayer and everybody's been praying. And this morning, a little after three, God says, get up and see what I did with Israel. He sent Great Britain's Royal Air Force to intercept. He sent France's Air Force to intercept. He sent Jordan, which are not friends with Israel, he sent Jordan to intercept. They had over 300 drones attack them in three different deployments. They had so many missiles, I've lost count. Some of them were armed, um, but nobody died. One young girl was hurt from shrapnel. Um, there's a lot of destruction, but God has proven himself strong and proven himself that he protects Israel when nobody else does. And thank you, God, for bringing those countries. And just before service started, I looked one more time at the blog to see how things were, and Turkey turned against Iran and said, back off. Amen. Don't mess with Israel, right? All right, what's happening at the gathering this week? First of all, we have a new greeter sign up, which I'm going to pass here. Willie, you can be the first. <laughs> and there's, even though there's, all, there's only one line next to each date, I mean, if you'd like to jump in and have two greeters, we can do that. But we really need greeters for the outpouring and, and for prophetic nights. So, uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, Keith, when it gets back to you, would you just make sure the board gets to the other side? Okay, that's a greeter sign up. Uh, this Friday night is the outpouring of God, 7 o'clock right here. And uh, you'll just be blessed when you come. It's, uh, we come and, uh, with no agenda. Uh, we're not, uh, we don't have any, any words or anything. We just come and see what God's going to do. And it just, normally he shows up in a big way, big way. Uh, outreach this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock. Uh, Diana Parker is going to come up and make a little announcement. She is our coordinator of outreach, and she will boss you around. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> All right, so it's it's that time again this Saturday, Outreach Pinellas uh, Hope. Uh, it's uh, 5726 126th Avenue North in Clearwater. Um, if you haven't came, please come. Please come serve. Um, you know, the people really look forward to us coming out. Um, just make sure I get this back um, afterwards. <coughs> <laughs> you can't have everything. <laughs> All right. All right, and one last thing uh, before we take our offering, uh, Passover celebration. There will be a Seder uh, dinner at Lee and Stacy Daniels. And I'll read this. Exploring the Jewish holiday of, of Passover, your evening includes worship, Hebraic prayers, and dinner with all of the elements. It's a full interactive Seder dinner with explanations about what the dinner is. Adults are 25, children are 5, and it's a bar at the barn at Pine and Palms uh, in, in Tampa. And uh, if you'd like to go back in the, in the uh, on our resource wall back there, there's a, an events page that gives the address and the time and more details. And you do have to, uh, you do have to sign up for it. And the website, the website is on, on that sheet as well. Okay, that's it. So now we have time for... Uh, 
for our offering. And uh, before we do that, we're going to say a declaration because we love declarations. Amen. And this is one we hadn't done in a while. So if you wouldn't mind standing with me, we'll recite our declaration. And then uh, you can, whatever God puts on your heart to give, that's what you give. Here we go. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare our community saved. All people are esteemed to know the Lord. Our government is based on the word of God. We release justice, honesty, and honor over every person. Marriages are strong. Families worship and pray together. Children are friends of God. We walk in his favor, growing in wisdom and stature. Moral purity is our baseline. Sickness and disease are gone. Premature death ends now. Nursing homes become a place of life. Miracles, signs, and wonders are common. The hungry are fed. Food is abundant. The homeless are housed. We release peace, prosperity, and love wherever we step. We say yes to your plan for our community. Thank you for using us, Lord, in bringing your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. Offering buckets are our front. Feel free to bring your offerings forward. And while you're standing there, just say hi to the person next to you.
Let's just continue to give the Lord some worship this morning. Just continue praising him for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are holy, God. All the angels sing, holy, 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 God. Creation sings, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Yeah, sing your song. Praises to him, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, all. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. Holy Lord, holy Lord, holy Lord. Your name is the name above all names, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Ooh. Mm. Yes. Yes, Lord Jesus. Let's get up. 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 Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who? Oh. And all his children shouted. Amen. Whoo, Jesus, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we just worshiped the entire Bible. We went, we sang every song, A to Z. Your name is exalted, the Lamb, the only one who can open the seals. Only one who is worthy to open the seals. Amen. You got something? Okay. So this morning we're going to talk about uh, kingdom legacy. Last week we talked about inheritance, and this morning we're going to talk about legacy. And you can go back and listen to last week's. It's on our website. It's on something else, um, YouTube. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> I'm glad somebody knows where it is. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about legacy this morning and kingdom legacy. But first, I want to read a word to you that Pastor Gene gave yesterday when we had our worship. Um, we just happened to, he happened to record it and send it to me, which I was so glad because I believe that this is where God has us right now. And let me just read the word to you. Um, it says, prepare for the new wine and prepare to become a new wine skin. This will require you to be stretched. This will require you to be uncomfortable. Who wants to be stretched and uncomfortable? I know you guys are jumping up and down on that, right? But there's something about being uncomfortable that brings the comforter in to help us move. This will require you to have a hope and expectation that I am doing something new. And I am bringing something new and life-giving. And I am taking you away you have not been before. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Amen. I am not asking you to forget what you know. I'm asking you to be ready to add to and build upon. Amen. Amen. For I am a building God. Amen. I am a God who brings progression. Yeah. I am the God who makes all things new. So prepare for the new wine, prepare for the new thing, prepare for the new direction. That is a good word, right? And I believe that is where God has us right now. He is uh, making us containers for the new wine he's pouring out. He's making us containers for that. And we are going to be stretched. We are stretched. Listen to the testimonies this morning. We are stretched. We're Walmart stretched, right? <laughs> and we're uncomfortable with where he's stretching us. However, there's a peace that comes with that stretching because we know that the stretching's being done by the Lord, not in our own will, not in our own flesh. It is God who is stretching us, and we can feel the power of the Spirit going with the stretch. 
So I, th I thought that was such a good word. And I believe that that's what God is doing. He is building. We're in a building season. And I'm not big on going to the past. But I really felt like this morning just to remind us that, you know, from 2019 to 2020 became a season of destruction against the people of God, against people in general. It was a destruction time where they tried to kill, steal, and destroy us. The enemy tried to kill, steal, and destroy us. He tried to isolate us. He tried to uh, uh, contain us where we couldn't be together, where we couldn't worship, where we couldn't pray, where we couldn't be with our families. He divided families. He divided churches. He divided communities. The enemy was on a pattern of destruction. But God, Amen. but God is on the pattern of creation and building and restoring and renewing. And that's what we're in. We're like what the enemy tried to do. God is going to restore everything that was stolen. Amen. God is going to restore. And, and that word, that what, part of that word that said, I'm not asking you to forget what you know. What I'm asking you to do is build, is to... Um, uh, I lost my page here. Not forget what you know, but yes, to add and build upon with the building God who's building right now. So as we think about building, you know, it's sometimes it's hard when we go through loss to, to um, heal from that loss. There is a healing that had to happen and that is still occurring through the loss that we went through over the last few years. But God is saying, uh, you know, I've pressed the gas. You know, I, I, I don't have a 440. I have the, the maximum jet engine that you can have. I'm on an accelerated pattern to move you forward in the building process. And there's a couple of scriptures I want to read. Um, when we talk about, let me just read what, I, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about leaving a legacy. It says, when we leave a legacy for the kingdom, we're not only making an impact on the now. We're building from the past, but we're also making an impact for the future generations by leaving them wisdom, wealth, influence, and a kingdom perspective for what is to come. Uh, we watched something the other day. We were invited to be part of a, a conversation. I've been working on this legacy thought process for quite a while, and we were part being invited to watch a conversation with um, Bethel and uh, Chris Vallotton and all that, and they were talking about uh, they have a hundred-year thought plan. Wow. How many of you have a hundred-year thought plan? How many of you have next week's thought plan? <laughs> oh, Carol does. Okay, we're good. We're good. Somebody's got it. But you know, when you think about, we don't we don't always think about, and I've we don't always think a hundred years in advance. We're thinking about, you know, maybe next week, maybe next year. Some of us have a five-year plan, a ten-year plan, but Think about what you're leaving now, what you're doing now, and its effect on the generation 100 years from now. Amen. Your children's 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 children. Amen. And that the legacy that you leave can impact generations to come, of course, for the bad, which we're saying no to that, but for the kingdom, which God has already put us on the track, on the trajectory of impacting the kingdom for the generations to come. So I'm not thinking about my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. I'm thinking about my great-grandchildren's children. What I do now, I want them to have a momentum built from my feet, from my, uh, my influence, from my relationship with the Lord that they can thrive off of as they step into their destiny with God. So we want to leave a, 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 an impact, a legacy for those who are to come. Uh, I want to read a scripture, Mark 4, 30 through 34. We're actually going to go a little bit through Ezra, but we're going to start with this Mark 30 through 34. It says, um, and Jesus is talking about the parables. It says, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all other seeds on the earth. 
But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. I want to be a mustard seed for the future generation. That as we're planted, you know, Mark, earlier in the chapter, it says that when it's sowed on good soil, then it will produce a 30, 60, 100 fold. I am good soil. I want us to remember we are good soil so that when things are sown in us, we will produce 30, 60, 100 fold for the kingdom to grow. Amen. We are kingdom growers. Yes. We are not just people skipping through and hope we make it to next week. We are people that are creating a momentum behind the breath of God in order to change the trajectory of our earth. Of the people of God. Uh, I heard somebody, I don't know who said this, but someone was saying, you know, there's, uh, I was talking to Debbie Cover. She says, you know, um, uh, there were three arcs. Moses, uh, Noah in his ark that saved humanity. Moses in his ark, you know, as a baby, that saved a people. And Jesus in his ark, the ark of the covenant, the, the very manifest presence of God that saved the whole earth, that came for the whole earth. So we're not really satisfied with anybody going to hell. I'm not satisfied with that. And if I know someone's on the, the way to hell, then my kingdom seed is sowing so that they will have the recognition of Jesus Christ so they are born again because we don't want to see anyone lost Jesus came to save the lost that's what he came to do and we're on the mission filled with Jesus to save the lost yes we want the sick to be healed. We want the, the possessed to be delivered. We want the dead to be raised. We want all that. We want to leave an inheritance for our children. We want all that. But what we want is we want to see salvation of Jesus Christ cover the earth. That's what we want. And we have to remember in this building phase we're in, it's not always easy. Building is hard. You can ask people who actually do building, like Mark, you know, some of the others. Building's hard. It's hard work. And sometimes it doesn't look quite like you want it to look, but you still press in. But let's go to Ezra. Let's, I want to talk through Ezra a little bit. Because I believe there's been a declaration by the king of kings to build the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to say it again. There's been a declaration by the king of kings to build the house of the Lord. Amen. He wants his house built. He wants it built in our house. He wants it built as we gather. He wants it built on the streets. He wants his house to be seen like the city on the hill. And like they were uh, testifying to, where is Ezra? They were testifying to this morning, you know, Going to Walmart, people were hungry to be prayed for. They're hungry to encounter the Lord. We had 200 baptisms in the water. We've got, you know, revivals. We call them revivals, but I don't really think they're revivals. Um, to me, anyhow, we won't go into that. But we, we, won't, we, won't, we won't split hairs here. What it is, it is Jesus calling his people to salvation. He's calling his people to himself. You can call it whatever you want, but that's why he came. To give his life, to die, to save the lost so that they would have eternal life with him. That's why he came. We can call it whatever we want, but what it is, it is the mission of Jesus that's being realized on the earth right now. People are getting saved. They're getting baptized. They're getting born again. They're getting filled with the Spirit. They're having an encounter of God that is transforming their life, which is their seed to leave a legacy for the people that are going in front of, ahead of them. Okay, Ezra 1. That's just the whole gospel right there. Jesus has come to save the lost. And our job is to help them encounter the ones he's calling to himself. Jesus says no one can come to him except through the Father. 
He, he calls people unto himself. And there are people who are being called that just need a GPS, us. They need us to be their GPS to help them to connect, to help them engage. They need, they need that help to realize what's happening to them. You know, I don't know if, uh, sometimes when you first encounter Jesus, you don't even know what's going on. You just know that there's God touching you. You don't even know what to do with it. That's the reason it says go out. We got to disciple the nations. But the nations aren't big plots of land. They're people who have encountered Jesus and need discipling. Okay. Ezra 1. It says, now the first, 1, 1. Ezra. Now the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, um, in the first year, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all the kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, uh, sorry, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me. And he has commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Who is among you all his people? May his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in, uh, I'm sorry, Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God. He is God. God is calling us to build his house. God is calling us to build his house. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, uh, besides the free will offerings from the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. So when I was, I've been reading through this for a little while, been kind of praying and meditating on it. The Lord was showing me a couple of things. First of all, he's calling us to build his house. And that is nothing new. He's been calling people, build my house. But what he was showing me, that we're going to see a change in the hearts of the kings. When what I'm saying is leadership, people in high positions, toward the heart of God. Where they are making way for the people of God to do what God has called them to do. And right now we know there is opposition against us. But God is turning the hearts of the opposition toward us. And we will see as we go through Ezra. Uh, I won't read all of Ezra. You guys are lucky today. Uh, but, oh, how many nine chapters or so. But as we'll see that, you know, there will be people in high positions that will have a heart for God, whether they believe or know God, that will go toward the people of God that will make way for us to do things that we didn't even think we'd be able to do. You know, our minds say, oh, like Pastor Jean shared, oh, nobody's going to want prayer. Nobody wants to hear this, which is actually the opposite of what God is showing us. People are starving to be fed from the nourishment of the Lord that only he can do. Only he can do. So I believe that we're going to see a change of, of hearts in high places that are going to be changed toward the Lord. And that from that, we're going to see this generosity, monetary possessions, uh, offerings that will be shifted in our direction. And, and God is teaching us to be good stewards of those things. But, um, you know, we need to understand that all the finances belong to God. And he can change a person's heart to write a check for $10 as easy as he can change a person's heart to write a check for a million dollars. God does not need decimal points and dollar signs to be able to fund what he is doing. And when we get that in our mind, that yes, Lord, this may cost us $4 million, or that may cost us $20 million. I know uh, Bethel is building uh, a building that's going to cost $97 million. Is that what it is? $97 million? And they're paying cash for it. They've already raised $47 million. So understand, God has plenty of money. He knows how to turn the head of a people where their generosity becomes beyond what they can even understand. 
And there are actually people looking to fund these type of things. So we just need to understand and declare that God not only has given us the ability to create wealth, he's also given people the hearts to join our wealth for the kingdom advancement in order to fulfill what he needs to do. Amen. Finance is talked about through the Bible so much. You know, God, God knew that there was going to be financial need and a monetary system. And so he taught us how to cooperate with him in order to get every bit of funding that we need to accomplish what he had planned. You know, he's not telling you go out and do this and you figure it out. He just doesn't work that way. He's telling us, this is what I've called you to do, and I've got the funding for it. So just walk in faith and know that as you go, you will have what you need. So people gave financially. And what was interesting, and I don't have the scripture written down here, but the other thing is not only did they give in all different ways, but they made sure every worker was taken care of. Every worker was funded and taken care of, that they had what they need. And that's what we have to remember, too. You know, uh, everybody needs to be funded in the mission that they're called to. So let's go to uh, Ezra 3.10. It says, when the builders laid the foundation, so they're starting to the restoration of the, the temple, <clears throat> excuse me, of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood... In their apparel with the trumpets and the Levites and the son of Asaph with symbols to praise the Lord according to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang responsive praising and giving thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because... Um, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. You know, worship is being restored. Worship is being restored, not only in the house of the Lord, but in the hearts of his people. And there is a huge move of worship happening right now where people have the freedom not only to worship, but to prophetically worship, to have spontaneous worship, to have uh, this reply worship to him that as, as we begin to worship, there is this reply that is rising up in us where all we can do is declare his name, declare who he is. Even that song that we sang, you know, holy counselor, uh, you know, just people, these are the songs that are coming out. And if you'll start listening to the songs, you'll see that there's such a, a, re, a restoring of the exaltation of Jesus. Amen. There's a restoring of worship right now. And, and that's what they were doing. They were restoring worship back. And then uh, verse 12, it says, But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the father's houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of the temple was laid before their eyes. The reason they did is because they knew what the former temple looked like and they couldn't accept the new thing that God was doing. There's a new wine with a new container that was happening here. And all they knew was Solomon's temple. And it didn't compare to Solomon's temple. And sometimes when we get caught in comparison, we can't see the glory of the Lord moving because we're caught in the behind instead of in the future. And we can't leave a legacy when we're trying to carry the old with us and not allowing God to move us into the new. There's new things. I mean, we're seeing it. We're seeing new things. We're seeing God do things, and we're like, we don't understand. We don't understand why we want to jump up and down. We don't understand why we want to scream and run around. We don't understand. Ten years ago, I would have never done that. How many say that that are up here jumping up and down, screaming and running around? I mean, you know, God is causing us where when he touches us, we cannot contain ourselves. When, when, when there's true worship coming out of our hearts, we don't know what to do. Do we scream? Do we yell? Do we lay on the floor? Do we do cartwheels? Do, do we cry? What do we do, God? Because you are so present that I can't contain the skin on my bones. 
I just want to come out of myself because I don't know what else to do. Have you ever felt like, you know, I just don't know what to do. Do I kneel? Do I jump up and down? Do I stand on the... I don't know what to do. All I know is your presence is so tangible. I got to do something in response to you being here. I've got to do something. I've got to show you that I know you and that when you touch me, there is a response from my heart. I have to show you. That's what God is doing. He is inhabiting the praises of his people. And not only, because that's what his word says, but not only is he inhabiting it, he's causing us to come out of our shells, come out of our boxes, come out of our conformity, and be willing to be transformed by the living God who has met us where we are. He's met us where we are. He's met us where we are so that he can take us where we need to go. <laughs> like David. I didn't see naked people, but you know. can you feel it? Can you sense it? That there is something happening that is so profound for us. It's so profound and it's so new and it's so tangible and it's, 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 it, you really can't put words on it. I mean, you lay on the scriptures because it's the closest you can get to understand what he's doing. So we've got to let go of what we thought or let go of, of last year's manna so we can eat what is fresh today. So we can be that new wine for him, that new container for him, so that even in our inhibitions, you know, God is just saying, I love your response to me. I love that you're willing to respond to me. And we're like, God, we can't do anything else. We have to. We have to respond. Whew. God's going to make us cry today. Hmm. And we know that there will be resistance. There's no doubt. I'm going to read out of uh, Ezra 4, 4 through 5. We know that we'll, there will be resistance. Uh, but, oh, yeah, let me just, whew. I can't really see it because my eyes are water. <laughs> then the, I can see it from the back. Then the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. That's what they want. They want us to be discouraged. They want us to be pulled away from our eyes being locked on Jesus, just locked on him. They want us to be pulled away. They want to discourage us. They want to send trouble our way. They want to give us counsel that is against the counsel of the Lord, that it's against the word of the Lord. But it sounds reasonable. It sounds like maybe I need to listen. Maybe I need to stop. Maybe I need to think. But it goes on to talk about that how God sent the prophets in chapter 5 to encourage the people to prophesy into the building. God is sending his word to keep us encouraged to break off the enemy's attack. Those subtle voices that try to lure us away. God is sending his word in order to help us jump over the roadblocks that's been sent in front of us. We've got to get over those roadblocks. We got to, I, I, I was telling uh, Pastor Karen Jean that I had a nightmare last night. And I, I kept on uh, having this dream about this sociopath trying to kill me. And uh, I'm like, great. I would actually like to sleep. It kept waking me up, and then I'd go back to sleep, and I'd go back into it. And finally, I woke up, and I said, I just bind you in the name of Jesus, and I send you away because I need a whole night's sleep tonight. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it's, you know, you think, oh, well, you know, it's just a dream. But what happens, it disrupts your sleep, which doesn't give you the same preparation. So, God, you just got to restore and refresh me for today because my uh, eight or nine hours of sleep, Fell a little short. <laughs> People are like, eight or nine hours, yeah. I like a solid. <laughs> but, you know, we just have to recognize that sometimes we just have to take authority of what's coming against us, what's trying to distract us, what's trying to steal our sleep, our health, 
our mental stability, what is trying to steal it? And we may not know, but we can bind up whatever's coming against us and send it to Jesus and receive the refreshment, the fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. We take the word, we read it. Even Pastor Gene's word this morning, that was a fresh word. It was a fresh manna for us this morning. I'll, I'll have it posted up on our um, website, or maybe I'll email it to you. Maybe I'd like for me to email it to you, because I thought it was a good word for us to pray in, too. The other thing is we're going to see, uh, in, in Ezra, like I said, I'm not going to read all of Ezra, but people started coming back. People who had turned away came back. People were coming back back to the temple, back to the house of the Lord. And that's what we were talking about earlier, the testimonies earlier. People are coming to the house of the Lord. People who have, uh, we've had several words about the prodigals coming back. The prodigals are running in. They, they have seen enough of the world to know that that's not the place they want to spend their life. They're coming back into the house of the Lord. And we're welcoming them in wherever they are, in whatever state they're in, because they're going to encounter God with us. They're going to see the beauty and the holiness of Jesus over their lives and see the restoration for their hope and their future, right? And the enemy will be defeated. The enemy will be defeated. And the honor of the Lord will continue to come out of our mouth. Uh, my favorite scripture right now, and I, I just keep uh, saying it, and I've been putting my name in there, and I want you guys to start putting your name. You know, we talked about putting our name in the scriptures. Let the scriptures personalized come alive inside of us. We talked about that last week. I hope some of you practice. I practice. I practice. But um, Ezra 7.10, it says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and do it. So I want you to put your names in there. Cindy prepared her heart to seek the law, the law of the Lord and to do it. And to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. God wants us to prepare our heart to seek the Lord, to seek his word, and to do it. Seeking without doing. We talked about that last week. It just doesn't work. Because he will keep us in perfect peace. He will keep us in perfect harmony with him. Uh, Isaiah 26 says that, that the Lord will keep us in perfect peace. That's, that's where we can stay. We know that we can stay in perfect peace. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. So the Lord has guaranteed us perfect peace. He said that he will keep us in perfect peace. Because our mind is stayed on him. Because we trust in everything that he has for us. So when we think about our legacy... Everything we do pours in to the legacy we're leaving for the hundreds and thousands of years to come till Jesus comes back. Right? It's going to be funny to think about, because uh, I started to think about this when I, actually someone had mentioned something to me about a hundred year vision of, a while back, maybe five or ten years ago, I don't know, about five years ago. And I started thinking about what does a hundred years look like? I mean, what does... 2124 look like and not in the so much the technical sense of what you know what will the world be like but what does it look like for the people of God for the movement of God that's happening on the earth for what we have sown in 2024 that will be part of the reaping in 2124 I mean that's that's a big thought that's a big thought isn't it yeah I just, I just thought that was so, so cool to kind of think about that. Um, I'm really about done. I think I'm about done. But there is uh, one. Of, I want us to, we're going to do some prayer uh, uh, in just a minute. I want us to have some time to pray for healing. The Lord kind of gave me a thought on that this morning. And I want us to have time to pray for people. Uh, you know, it is the presence of God that brings healing. He's given us the authority to lay hands on each other and to heal the sick and 
<sighs> cleanse the leopards and raise the dead and cast out demons. But I just have felt like there's some people that needed healing this morning. So I wanted to have some time to pray over healing. But before we do, I'm going to read one other scripture. Then, I'm, then we'll just close and invite people up who want healing. And we've got a healing team that's going to come up and pray for people. I want to read out of Ephesians um, 4. Let me find which scripture I wanted. I don't think I wrote it down. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Ephesians 5.1. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ has also loved us. And given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. So if you'll stand, I'm just going to kind of read this and impart this over us as we close. And Therefore... Be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ has also loved us. Whew. And given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Jesus, we just thank you that we are one with you. And that you are teaching us to be as you are to be lovers of God and lovers of people, to walk in kindness, to walk in humility, to walk in authority, to walk in power, to be able to transform, completely change every demonic force around us and bring the peace that you have guaranteed us. Even in Solomon, it said that there was peace on every side. And there was so much wealth that silver and gold laid on the streets. So, Lord, just give us a vision of that where we bring peace on every side. That when we enter a place that the demonic actually tremble at our footsteps. And we release the kingdom where there's a taking of that territory. For you, Jesus. Bring us the hearts of people who are ready to be transformed by an encounter, Lord. And we will do what you've called us to do. Just like Ezra, we've prepared our hearts with the word of God to follow you, to do what you've called us to do, and to transform this earth like it is in heaven. And we just bless and honor you this morning, Jesus. Amen and amen. Woo. Okay, so if anyone wants prayer, I'm going to ask my prayer team to come up. And if anyone wants prayer, we'd love to pray for you. It doesn't have to be healing. We'll pray for whatever you need. But we just felt like we were supposed to pray and agree with you for your breakthrough.